So crossover points. So what is that? So basically for grade 11 and grade 12, you've been told all your life that uh, functions cannot cross asymptotes. RAR. Uh, that is not entirely true. That is true for vertical asymptotes, but they can actually cross horizontal and oblique asymptotes. Damn, right? Now, why that is the case? Why that is the case is uh, the horizontal asymptotes only happen basically when your function gets really big. So, for rational functions, uh, these guys, uh, it kind of tapers toward it when the x values get really big. But since this is only when x values get really big, when the x values are small, they can do some lots of weird stuff over here. They can cross your horizontal asymptote. So let's say you have your horizontal asymptote over here. At the near the ends, it's going to do your tapering business. But when the x values are a lot smaller, let's say this is your x-axis, me y-axis, it can do some weird stuff like crossing over like that. So it's not going to cross over so many times like the way I drew here. It's probably going to cross like once or twice. But the whole point is, yes, it can cross over. And this is going to help with the graph because sometimes if you don't find crossover points, it doesn't really make sense how to connect with all the information together. But with a crossover point, it really helps us uh, confirm that, uh, confirm what the shape of the function looks like. Okay, so let's write this down. So crossover points are points on function that intersect. We're going to use intersect for a reason. Intersect the HA or OA. So how to get these is because the function is intersecting with your HA or OA, if you remember uh, how we can find intersection points, we can just set the two functions equal to each other if you want to find intersection points. So since the crossover point is just the intersection of your rational function with the HA to find a crossover point, set your HA equal to the function and solve the equation. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So we're going to do an example to showcase this. We have this guy over here. In this case, we have a horizontal asymptote. So, yeah, let's do it. Okay. So since this guy, the degree at the top, is smaller than the bottom, we have our HA at 0. Okay, so to find a crossover, we just set our horizontal asymptote, y equals 0, equal to our function. So that means that we just let 0, which is our ha, equal to 2x minus 5 over x squared minus 4x plus 6. Okay, and all we have to do is solve this equation and get our x value, and that will tell us where our crossover point is. So solving this equation, we can multiply both sides by whatever this bottom is over here. That's the trick. And since we have 0 on the other side, we're just going to get 0 equals to 2x minus 5. x equals 5 over 2. There we have it. There's our crossover points. x equals to 5 over 2. So let's go to Desmos and see that. See our function, and we're actually going to see this crossover point in action. Okay, so if you graph a function, x minus 5 over x squared, what was it? What was our function over here? x squared minus 4x plus 6. Okay, awesome. Our horizontal last one, 0. So as you can see, our horizontal asymptote is at zero. You can see our function tapering off this way, approaching it from below, approaching it from above. But as you can see, our function can still do some weird stuff near zero. And you can see our function crossing the horizontal asymptote right at 5 over 2, or 
there we have it. So that's our crossover point. So makes sense. All we have to do is find the intersection between your horizontal asymptote or your oblique asymptote with your function. And we're actually going to do a oblique asymptote example right now. That example is slightly more complicated. The process is the same, and I'll show you an easy way to find the crossover point. Okay, so this is an example of finding crossover points with OAs or something that's more complicated. So I already took the liberty of doing long division just to save some time. As you can see, our function, the degree at the top, is bigger than the degree at the bottom. So we have an OA, we can do our long division, looks like that. <coughs> All right, looks like this. So we're gonna write this up the exact same way as we did before, meaning we're gonna write it in our remainder form. So our function is to be two x plus four plus negative x minus 29 all over x squared minus two x plus six. You're going to see why we do this Do this in a second. It actually makes solving the equation so much more easier. It's going to be very easy. Okay, so same thing. To find our crossover point, we just set our horizontal asymptote or our OA equal to our function. So since our oblique asymptote is 2x plus 4, we just set that equal to our function. And we're going to set it to this guy. The, remain, the remainder form for it. So we have 2x plus 4 plus negative x minus 29 all over the rest of this stuff. Okay. So you get to see why we did it like this. So if we move these guys to the other side, since we have 2x on this side and 2x on this side, once we move this guy over, it's be going to become negative 2x. So these guys are actually going to cancel out. Same thing goes for these fours over here. These guys are going to cancel out. So basically, what we have left is we have 0 on this side equals to this. This thing over here. That's all we have left. So let's write that. Negative red. We need it to be white. So negative x minus 29 all over x squared minus 2x plus 6. Okay, so since we have this, this is so much easier to solve. We can just multiply both sides by our denominator once again. We get 0 equals to negative x minus 29 x equals 2, negative 29. There we have it. There's our crossover point. So doing it any other way, actually, no, yeah, doing it any other way will actually make the equation more complicated. So if you use this remainder form, if you write out your function like this, it'll make solving your crossover point so much easier. As you can see, these guys cancel out. We're left with 0 equals to this. And then we can just get rid of our denominator and we're left with that. So, to my knowledge, this is the only way to get your crossover point or any single case possible. So this is kind of a one-size-fits-all. There's other ways that you can do it, but they're not one-size-fits-all. This is the only way I know that gets you your crossover point for any single scenario that you have. You just have to find your HA, find your OA, set it equal to your function, solve the equation, and you can get your crossover point. So let's graph this on Desmos to confirm it. So let's input our function into Desmos. This is so plus 3 minus 5. Hope it is. Let's see. Yes, it is. Plus 3 minus 5 divided by x squared. What was the rest of it? Minus 2x plus 6. So front goes like this. Some weird has things, but it's fine. Okay, so let's go to negative 29. So 
So negative 29 is around here. So let's go to all the way down our function. You can see, there we go. There's our crossover point. So let's zoom in just so we can see it a little more clearly. Oh, it's kind of awkward. So uh, there we go. Here we have it. Okay, so let's zoom in on that point. Let's keep zooming in. Uh, this is not working. But this point is showing because the purple guy is crossing over a green guy there. These guys are intersecting at that point. So you know our OA is crossing there. Okay. So yeah, I gotta zoom in super much to see the intersection, but hopefully you can trust me on this, that these guys are crossing each other at this point. I th think, I don't, I actually don't know. If the purple line is slightly below or bigger. Huh. Like zoom in super much. But, uh, yeah. I guess the difference is so small that Desmos has to round and can't really graph it. But yeah, just trust me on this one. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you can find your crossover point.